All right, what is up, YouTube? Raffle here today again, and we are back with the Fruit Catcher series officially. So let's go and build and run, and let's recap where we have um, last, where we had last, where we were last in. So we had successfully set up so that our fruits are successfully moving. So if we go and demonstrate in this iOS simulator over here, we have set our fruits to fall in our main menu as a decoration, so to make the game look better. Click start game and this is how it will go. Now we we haven't made basket move yet, so that is what we're gonna do in this um video now. But if we have um if our lives reach zero, so our lives left hits zero, our fruits will stop moving. But what we want is um that game over screen show and we want to move our basket. So in the next part we will set up at a high scores, which is the which is the final part of the series. Now here, let's go and click stop and let's head over to our main storyboard to set our game to set up our game over now. Go over here to our um if you haven't if you have forgotten how the the game will function, simply review parts one to four to get um to be able to learn how the concept of the game is. Simply the game is to drag the basket left to right and be able to catch all the falling fruits and to Make sure the lives do not hit zero. In the in part six, this is part five. So in part six, we will be um, adding in an extra power up, which is um a power up that will fall um every five um or no every uh, twenty seconds, and that will um decrease how much lives. That will increase how much lives you have left, so that you can um save yourself from hitting zero lives, which is what we don't want in this game. So that. That is the challenge of the game to um, make sure you um, are able to catch all fruits and score as high as you can. Okay, no, so that's basically how fruit catcher is. But if you want to, if you want the detailed explanation, um, you can watch parts one to four, and let's, and then you can learn how um, it goes. So let's go and design our game over. So this, drag in a UI label, and this label will say game over center line of text and the color of the text is set to white and custom font is jelly crazies now this custom font is not in xcode so it is not originally in xcode i downloaded this custom font from a from um the internet but if you want to also use this font i will leave a link in the description below so you can use it if you also want the font that is you can you can use any other font if you decide to but I decided the uh, Jelly Crazies will be the best font for this game. Uh, button will say restart, and what we want is the label. This button will restart, so whenever we, whenever we um, hit game over, we can restart our game. Now this button is blue, so we want that set to white because it doesn't look good when it's blue, and also it doesn't fit the rest of our theme as well. And for this button over here. Control. So, if you're on a Mac, Mac, Control, click or right click and drag to the previous view controller and select Modo. Next, we want to um, declare these two um, labels and and buttons. So, or should I say one label and button? So, head over to your header file, which is game code at H or whatever you call your header file, and do UI label asterisk. This will say game uh, over label. And then next, this is not what we want. Next, we want a UI button asterisk game over button. And we're gonna go back to our main storyboard, and we are gonna link those two up together. So Xcode, Xcode knows that when we are talking about those two, we are referring to these labels and buttons. So game over button goes to the restart, and game over label is to our game over label on the very top. So head over back to our implementation file and we want those two um to be hidden so do game over label that hidden equals yes for the view did load and game over button dot hidden equals yes also for on the view did load because this code here is what happens is when the game first loads up so when you push start game this is the very very first code that will run so we want these two um these two stuff that we had declared earlier to be hidden when we first load up our game, but on our game over, we want our um, stuff to show. So do game over that label that hidden equals no. Game over button that hidden is also set to no. 
So if we are to build and run now, let's see how our um, app will function. So wait for the iOS simulator to load up. So we start the game and let's play. So if you, if you've noticed, our game over label has not shown because we have set it to be hidden earlier in our view did load. But once we hit lives left, it's zero. Our game over label has successfully shown up and our restart button will take us back and we can restart the game as much as we want. But what we want to do is we also want to hide the fruits. So if you've noticed, um, let me demonstrate what I mean. If you have noticed right now, our fruits are not being hidden. If our um, lives left have, have hit zero, our fruits are still on the screen. So they're pretty much just in midair, not falling at all. And that is, we don't want that to happen because it will look weird. What I mean by that is this. So these um, two apples and this one orange here are not um, being hidden. So they're still mid-air in the screen, have stopped in motion. What we want to do is we want to go hide, hide all fruits that in, when it's game over. So we don't want any fruits to show when um, it is game over. So copy and paste fruits one at hidden equals no in our touches begin method. Head over to our um, game over and we want our hidden to be set to yes. Now if we um, play, so it will say build succeeded if we play and we will now be able to see what will happen as you'll be able to see what will happen now where the fruits will be hidden as the, as the lives left have hit zero and game over is initialized. And after this has been um, successfully done, we're going to code our basket to finally start moving. There we go. That is exactly how we want our game over labeled and our restart button to show. And we want our fruits now to be hidden. So if you have noticed, our fruits are no longer showing when we hit game over and that problem is now gone. Very nice. Next, we're going to go and make our basket to move. So in our game code.h, we're gonna declare a new timer. So we're gonna do ns timer um, space asterisk and we're gonna call this timer movement basket. Go over to our game code.m where we are now going to head over to our of no she no we're gonna head over to our view did load. Where is our view did load at? Okay, view did no view did load here. Touches began. Because that's where our view did load is. Our touches began. It's just on the very top. Um, if we go to our basket method, so this method here does not have any um thing yet, but that will be um we're gonna do basket dot a center equals cg point make basket center dot x plus basket move basket uh, center dot y close bracket semicolon and then we're gonna um, have two new image views so this two image views will prevent our basket from moving on the moving out of the screen so what I mean by that is these two serve as a border basically to simplify that is if we move our basket we don't want it to move out of the game so if we want to drag this basket around the screen do not it will um, stop the basket in here so it will not move out of the screen so this is very important because I was designing a game similar to fruit catcher before it was called um fruit nightmare which is actually on the actually on the app store right now if you want to check the game out um, I was actually coding that and I ran into this problem um, years ago and I was able to stop it by adding two borders here now let's go and declare um, our two image views which is UI image view asterisk and then this will be on um, two this will be two new image views that will, pre that will prevent our basket from moving to the very side of the screen now the way what what I'm going to what I'm going to call it is bat border move left so this is for the left and then we can copy and paste that and this will be for border move right so we're gonna make sure that these two um, images, image views that have already been declared are linked up. So 
drag border move left to the left image view and border move right to the very right. Um, let's build and run and let's get rid of that error over there. So go over to our game, go back to our game code.m and now we're going to declare, declare um, a, a UI touch. So go over to our touches begin. And this will say uh, UI touch um, asterisk UI touch equals. Let me there, make sure there's no brackets there. UI touch equals touches any object. Close bracket and a semicolon. And then we're going to do CG point, and this will be point equals a bracket touch location in view self dot view now we are going to utilize this touch um anywhere in the screen so this is going to be an if statement so do if point dot x now i had to mess around with these numbers for a while to get to make sure that what i'm touching will be able to make the basket move um, around without being um a pain so what i mean by that is if these numbers are wrong you can it will be um, a hassle to play the game because if you touch right sometimes the basket will move left and if you touch left sometimes the basket can move right so I messed I came with these I came up with these numbers as a result of messing around with the um, main storyboard so you can simply the way you can get these numbers are if you get grab the basket and go to the ruler which is this fifth tab along size inspector you can get the numbers over here so as I said before I that's how I got 291 which is over here 294 so I added it's three um three extra numbers so that that is very to the very left and you can um, make sure that that is the, if that is the area where you touch that is where the basket will move so do basket move which is the integer we declared earlier equals negative 31 else if so this the um opposite of one so do point dot x now this is to move it to the right is greater than 391 this will say basket a um, move equals 31 very nice and the next thing we want to do is we, we have our timer already declared so we're gonna do timer um, go back to our if statement do timer movement basket equals um, ns timer space a uh, scheduled timer with time interval 0 0.05 so make sure that this is selected so there's target selector user info uh, repeats target it will be self selector is at a selector and that was our basket method over here selector is basket method user info nil repeats yes and then close bracket and a uh, semicolon and we're going to do another if statement so do if basket uh, if cg are uh, rect intersects rect because we want to make sure our basket will not move off the screen so do basket dot frame um, border move left at frame first one and then we're going to do basket move equals zero copy and paste the if statement with command c and command v and this will be for the border ride so now we have made our basket successfully move and the last thing we want to do is go back here to our touches began and we're gonna do void close bracket touches ended and this will be basket move equals zero and then the, another one which will say if now basket of CG rect intersects rect basket basket dot frame border left dot frame and and bracket bo point dot x is less than 294 basket move then then basket move is set to zero copy and paste again with command c and command v this time for border right and this time the point dot x will be greater than 391 so that is all done for this video Let's build and run and let's see how, what we have done so far. So in the next video, we will, we will be setting up how our high scores at last. 
So go for catcher, start game. Now we can finally move our basket at last. And we can catch the falling fruits coming from the falling from the tree. Um, and if, as you can see, if our lives are decreasing as our um, fruits hit the ground. So that is um, part 5 concluded. The next video will be very short because all we need to do is set up our high scores. So thank you all for watching. Um, if you want to see more um, programming videos, hit a like and subscribe. And if this video helped you out, um, if this video helped you out, leave a comment and it will be um, very um, and I'll be happy to see if it's a positive comment, of course. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Um, if you want to stick around for more, I will say um, that I will explain how this how this code works. So just in case all of you are confused, um, let's I'll explain in, in detail now how um we how the code um works. So we started off this video by declaring two labels, uh, actually one label, which is this game over label here and this button. So that these all these two um lay things that we've declared our in here so this game over button will represent the restart and our game over label which we've linked up will represent our game over label and we've also made it so that this integer over here basket move we we have utilized it in in here which is in touches began so basket move will um move will um change value depending on which point in the screen that we that we have touched and then in, ha in here, in our basket um, method, when we find the basket method here, we have made it so that if our, if we are, if our um, image, which is our basket, which is this image over here, has will collide with these um, borders, which, is, which are these two borders over here, make sure the value of basket move is set to zero so that it will stop the image from moving so that it will not go off the screen. So yeah, that is um, part five concluded. If this uh, video helped you out, again, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.